guys. The next uh, swim mobility video is on shoulder mobility. We're going to kind of take a look at the whole shoulder girdle. Um, you know, swimming is a sport where you have this chronic adaptation to just a lot of pulling down thousands and thousands and thousands of times a week. Uh, so muscles in your lats um, and you know shoulder are obviously going to get really tight and kind of become in, in an, almost a shortened position. Um, a lot of times it's not necessarily that they're super short or contracted, but um, you know your nervous system is kind of holding a lot of tension in that spot. You have this increased tone. Uh, we've all kind of felt you know at the end of a, uh, a long pole set or something. You know, it's all you can do to reach up overhead because this part of your shoulder is just so tight. It's part of your you know, triceps and lats, um, just kind of chronically pulling down in that internal rotation position there. Um, so you know, something that we want to focus on with this is um, lats and subscap are kind of two primary internal rotators, uh, as well as your pecs. Those three muscles are, are really um, going to get you the most bang for your buck when, when you're looking at shoulder mobility. Um, as far as swimming is concerned. So uh, we'll take a look at that and a few others as well. Start out with the foam roller again. So you're gonna start foam rolling your lats here. Really easy, kind of laying on your side. Your lats run from here on your shoulder all the way down to the top of your pelvis actually. So I don't want you to go and do kind of this side of like by your obliques and everything. That's, that's not really uh, the best spot to be using a foam roller on, but you can kind of go through even just on, on your ribs there on the side and all the way up into the shoulder by the armpit. If you find a spot that's really tender, I want you to kind of sit on it. Just really try to relax. Sit there 10 seconds or so. What we're trying to do with this is cause the nervous system to kind of calm down. That deep pressure is going to put a lot of input into that muscle and kind of cause it to reflexively, reflexively relax. So we're impacting the or orthopedic system through the nervous system. You can take this a step further with the lacrosse ball. I'm a big fan of it. <clears throat> Same idea. Looking for that spot where your lats insert. Your subscap also inserts here. Um, right kind of in your arm, not in your armpit, but a little, a little bit off to the side. You'll, you'll find that tender spot while you're rolling around on it. The same idea. You can get a little more targeted though with the lacrosse ball. Find that tender spot, sit on it. And since both of these muscles do internal rotation, I want you to kind of bring your arm in and out of internal external rotation here. It's really, really good mobilization, kind of tacking those muscles and tendons down and causing some shear force over it. It's a great soft tissue mobilization you can do by yourself. Um, another reason this stuff is important is because, you know, your, your shoulder as a swimmer becomes really unstable in the front. And a lot of that is due to um, the capsule not being, um, or it's, it's way too tight in the back because these muscles that kind of tie into that same area start pulling on it and make it really tight. So if you think about uh, your, sh your shoulder uh, being encased in, in this, uh, almost like a, think of it like a, a bag. So if that bag is being pulled or really tight in the back, it's being pulled forward, it's kind of chronically pushing your shoulder forward. Um, and you know, that's where we see a lot of, of issues with impingement and um, typical instabilities with, with the shoulder. Another reason why that shoulder gets pulled forward is because of your pec. So pec minor attaches into the front part of your shoulder blade, kind of right through here. Um, and you, it's where you see that kind of classic rounded shoulder posture with a lot of swimmers. Um, because every, you know, every single stroke, you're right in front of you here, um, internally rotating, whether it's freestyle, breast stroke, butterfly, even backstroke, it's not necessarily in front of you, but you have that element of internal rotation behind you um, or on, on your side. So, Pec is really important to get loosened up so that you can get in a, a nice tall posture. If you look at that from a performance standpoint, if you're here all the time while you're swimming, this is as high up as I can reach with my arm with my shoulder rolled forward. If I get back in a nice neutral position, boom, easy. Um, and, and you'll see these acute range of motion changes um, pretty quickly, but it's something that you really need to stay on top of. So working on the pec with this next one, I'm gonna kind of focus on um, not right on the shoulder, but a little bit medially, right kind of underneath your clavicle, your collarbone. Um, you kind of find this little pocket there 
that you can kind of, that's right where the pec inserts, and you can kind of work all through here. And we're gonna put pressure on this by putting pressure on the uh, wall here with the ball. So, kind of move it around, find that point of tenderness, and I want you to mobilize that in a position of function, which for swimming is overhead. So we're going up, over your head, and back down. Nice and controlled with all of this stuff, as always, and back down. You know, I, I do this 10, 15 times. Pretty easy, but great, great um, soft tissue work that you can do all by yourself. So. Um, Yes. A lot of times people want to stretch their lats because they're feeling super tight in here. You see a lot of people will hold on to something and they end up just doing this. And that is really, really awful for your shoulder. So stop doing that. Um, you know, every time that you're banging into that shoulder there, you're putting that shoulder in a position of impingement, which is what all this stuff is trying to avoid. Um, with impingement, it leads to all kinds of nasty things. You know, down the road, it's kind of a precursor to a lot of tendonitis or um, rotator cuff injuries or biceps tendonitis, a lot of overuse injuries because you're kind of in that impingement position. So we don't want to keep beating it up every time you go to stretch your lats. So a good way that I like to stretch my lats is from the bottom up, as opposed to stretching here and kind of cranking the shoulder down this way and beating up the shoulder, hold on to like a door jam so I'm just holding on to the edge. This wall has a little ridge here. I'm just holding on to the edge here. You can hold on to the flagpole or um, whatever you want to meet. But um, hold on to something here. Make sure there's tension in the shoulder. And then I want you stretching from the bottom up. Like I said, your lats attach actually into the top of your pelvis. So you're going to move one leg behind you here. So my shoulder position isn't moving. But I'm still getting a really, really effective stretch through the lat. And you should feel that all the way down through here. And again, I'm just moving one leg behind the other in and out of that position a couple times. You can even, even hold this position, take a deep breath, use your ribs to kind of stretch that a little bit further. It's a really effective stretch that doesn't um, beat up the shoulder very much. So um, another thing that we want to focus on, a lot of times with shoulder instability stuff, you, people get kind of this reflexive tone in their infraspinatus as one of your primary external rotators. A lot of times it's really weak in swimmers. So um, if you think about the top of your stroke is all internal rotation. The, one of the things that can limit internal rotation, not only that capsular mobility that I was talking about um, laying on the ground, but also um, tightness in the muscles that do external rotation. So um, kind of like if your biceps are really tight, you're not gonna be able to extend your elbow all the way. So we wanna make sure that your infraspinatus, one of the primary external rotators, is kind of loosened up. So that infraspinatus lives on the meaty part of your shoulder blade. Um, if you go and push into a wall into external rotation, you should feel it turn on, pretty easy to find. And I'm gonna use the wall again for this one. I'm gonna find that spot on my shoulder blade, put some good pressure into it. And when I feel that point of tenderness, I'm just gonna reach across. Again, we're just tacking down the muscle, causing a little bit of shear force. Really great soft tissue work. And finally, um, one of the last things, uh, you know, another muscle group uh, or muscle that gets really overused with swimmers is your upper traps. I see a lot of swimmers doing this, walking around school, um, and uh, you know, it, it's because because you live here for you know five hours a day, and so your your traps get really tight and uh, have this reflexive tone that they they kind of always hold. So we want to kind of decrease that and loosen that up. Your traps are kind of right up above your shoulder here, in between your shoulder and your neck, uh, above, above your shoulder blade. Put that ball there. Again, looking for that tender spot. And I'm gonna mobilize in the position of function, straight up overhead, nice and controlled. Do that 10, 15 times, find a new spot. This stuff is all pretty easy, but makes a huge difference in the way of range of motion changes. Um, you know, from the anatomical perspective or the physiological perspective, research isn't great on what exactly you're doing when you're doing this kind of soft tissue work, but it overwhelmingly supports um, acute range of motion changes, which is what we want 
because if you go and do this before your practice or before you know, your weight workout or whatever it is, and you start using that new mobility and those new uh, ranges, you're more likely to keep it because your body will naturally adapt to use that new range. So um, hope that helps you out with the shoulder mobility and we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.